I do believe Bitcoin eventually hits 100,000, I think 150, maybe 250, maybe even higher, but years down the line. I do think it becomes the digital gold. I really do believe that. I remain unbelievably positive on gold. The more uncertainty in the U.S. markets, in the U.S. economy, in the global economy, the more likely gold outperforms. All right, now, is it going to outperform Bitcoin? I do think so. I th do think from this point here for the next 12 months or so, eventually Bitcoin way outperforms gold in my opinion. Experienced trader Gareth Soloway delves into chart analysis, revealing a positive outlook for both gold and Bitcoin. However, he also holds the belief that Bitcoin will outperform gold in the long run. Recent data showed Bitcoin price stability holding firm over the weekend. Bitcoin had delivered a cool end to the Wall Street trading week, having also shaken off macroeconomic volatility catalysts from the United States. Despite the recent challenges, there is still case for investing in Bitcoin for long-term investors. First, long-term Bitcoin holders are still optimistic about the coin. On-chain data shows that these holders have over 14.6 million Bitcoins, representing over 75% of supply. This means that most of the recent fluctuation has been caused by minority holders. Soloway is optimistic about Bitcoin's future, suggesting it could surpass $100,000 and gain even more value in the coming years. He points out that the growing participation of major institutions, such as BlackRock, is bolstering Bitcoin's reputation as a digital gold asset. Gold was the safe haven asset of choice for centuries before the advent of Bitcoin. According to an August report the council published, demand for gold bars and coins in the U.S. hit a 13-year high in the second quarter. Soloway holds a positive view on investing in gold. He also highlights a key concern that Bitcoin is vulnerable to panic selling, which represents its worst-case scenario. He suggests that if Bitcoin were to breach specific support levels, it could potentially plummet to $20,000 or revisit its previous lows at around $15,000. However, he maintains his belief that Bitcoin will eventually surpass the performance of gold within the next 12 months. Now, let's shift our focus to the video. So let's talk some Bitcoin action. So basically, there's not a whole lot to update you on Bitcoin other than the fact that this resistance level that I talked about as being resistance is still working in play. And so with Bitcoin, right, we have a very clear scenario here where we came up off of this level, right, low, and still slightly a higher low, but you'd consider it almost a double bottom, and we bounced right into this level and we backed off. Now notice how Bitcoin sold yesterday with the stock market. And I wanna just make this point. I do think, and I, by the way, I do believe Bitcoin eventually hits 100,000, I think 150, maybe 250, maybe even higher, but years down the line. I do think it becomes the digital gold. I really do believe that. I think the fact that BlackRock's getting involved, that you're having big institutions getting involved, that's only going to add to the validity that it is a digital gold asset. But this is the kicker. It's a maturity game. You know, when you have an asset that literally debuted 14 years ago, that is a minuscule asset compared to what is the stock market or what is gold. I mean, think about how long gold's been around tens of thousands of years it's been used. So my point is this, you're still getting the fear to kick in selling. And that's my base case or my worst case scenario where if you're gonna see Bitcoin break this level and then come down to 20,000 and break that level and potentially come down to the lows at 15,000 and change and break that level, the way that's only gonna happen is if the NASDAQ starts to collapse. If you see 30, 40% downside on the NASDAQ, we even talked about maybe retesting those COVID lows, um, you know, which would be about a 50 plus percent drop on the NASDAQ. It's, I do think at that point, because this is still influenced as a risk asset, it's still considered risky, you will see this go much, much lower. So keep an eye on that. All right, next chart. Let's go into gold here real quick, guys. I want to talk a little bit about gold. If we look at gold, gold continues to do just fine. Dollar being up, dollar being down, whatever it is, the gold chart continues its bullish consolidation. It peaked just above this level right here. We know that that's a pivot point. And then we even go to this one here. We briefly got above it here and we sold off. So it's still struggling. If we get through this level, you'll have a little resistance right here. But ultimately, we're headed back 
to the all-time highs, all right? So again, watch that very closely. I remain unbelievably positive on gold. The more uncertainty in the U.S. markets, in the U.S. economy, in the global economy, the more likely gold outperforms. All right, now, is it going to outperform Bitcoin? I do think so. I th do think from this point here for the next 12 months or so, eventually Bitcoin way outperforms gold in my opinion. But again, while Bitcoin is still a risk asset, it's likely that gold will be a more sturdy safe haven asset. And I always bring this up, but remember, the central banks around the world are loading the boat on gold and they are the ones with the printing presses. So if they're the ones with the printing presses and they know what they're going to have to do in the, in the future, which is print more money because of the debt issues in the world, in the U.S., in Japan, in China, whatever it may be, then guess what? If they're buying gold, it's probably an indicator we need to think about being in some gold as a longer term investment here for the next five, 10 years, in my opinion. While the Fed's tightening cycle seems to be in its final stages, the Bank of Japan is yet to move the needle on rates. The yen fell to a more than 10-month low of 148.49 per dollar and remained within striking distance of 150, a level which some market watchers saw as a line in the sand that would spur forex intervention from Japanese authorities similar to that of last year's. The weak yen is creating a number of factors that are driving up Bitcoin demand in Japan. In an environment of soaring interest rates and economic unpredictability, Bitcoin and the broader crypto market face increased headwinds. The shift in the financial landscape was recently underscored by the benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury yield, which hit a 16-year high this Thursday. Now, let's shift our focus to the video. The Japanese Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, basically came out last night, and I told you guys about this in the last few game plans, that essentially they were going to be releasing their policy statement, their interest rate decision. They did not change interest rates. They kept it at a minus 1.1. So it actually is a minus rate over there in Japan, and that enabled the markets to stay calm. If we look at the dollar yen today, the dollar yen is really not doing much. Yesterday it was down a little bit, today it was up. The reason why you're seeing a little bounce in the S&P and the NASDAQ today at this point, I don't know if it will last all day. It's going to be interesting because part of the issue on a Friday is that by the time you get to the afternoon, there are traders and institutions that say, hey, we don't want to hold into the weekend and wonder where rates in the U.S. will be on Monday night. Where's the dollar, or I should say Sunday night, where's the dollar going to be? Where's all these other things going to be? So that is a very important thing to keep in mind. So right now markets are up. They're breathing a sigh of relief. The Bank of Japan did not throw a curveball, so it's a little bit of a reprieve. And the, the S&P and the NASDAQ, frankly, were short-term oversold, right? Two major big down days. You're almost due for a little bit of a reflex natural bounce by the dip, if you will. Here's your 10-year yield chart real quick. The 10-year yield continues to be up. It's a little bit off of its highs from the overnight and yesterday, but this is getting very close to a shortable level. I know that sounds crazy because the Fed just came out, rates higher for longer, but you know what? That's jargon. That's nonsense. What you need to do is focus on the charts. The Fed is going to create FOMO or FUD. The Fed is, the you know, everyone. You know, you look at what anyone is saying in the market, CNBC, Ducks Business, all of them, they're going to sh shake you. They want to get you to be fearful or greedy. And in this situation, you just follow the charts. And the charts are your friends because it's going to give you the highest probability of making money. Doesn't guarantee it. It just gives you a high probability. So where is that telling me it's going to go? Look, every time it hits this line, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, and so on and so forth. Here it was above and it bounced, so which makes sense because that was when it was support. This is resistance. So right now, that's your bogey. It's around 4.6% on the 10-year. If the 10-year gets there, that's a beautiful thing. All right. The macroeconomic stage appears to be set for Bitcoin to shine amidst concerns about the U.S. economy. Bitcoin can be a great pick to let the U.S. economy free from debts and strengthen its financial standing. The Bitcoin price predictions for 2024 vary widely, with some experts predicting a new all-time high while others are more conservative. However, the overall consensus is that Bitcoin is bullish in the long term. That wraps up our conversation for today. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this information valuable, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to stay informed with the latest news and videos. Thanks for joining us.